Hi folks, this is Steve Rossetti, co-founder of MoviePix.com and author of the MoviePix.com guide to Adobe Premiere Elements. And here we are in Premiere Elements. We have a timeline here that's made up of a number of types of media. I'm not just talking about audio and video, but even among video, I've got some things that were shot with an AVCG camcorder. I've got some things that were shot with a phone, some things that were shot with uh, like a little GoPro camera, and some things that were shot uh, by my drone. So I've got a lot of different media mixing together in here. Now this is version 2021 and since 2021 uh, the program has a feature built into it and I'll show it to you very quickly. I'll talk about it more in another tutorial and that it is that it uses your graphics card, your GPU to accelerate effects, transitions, and workflows. So the mix of clips in here you can't really tell that they are not matching the project settings because the program does such a great job of blending them all together. Now, wherever you see yellow orange above a clip, that means some uh, effect has been added that needs to be rendered. I recommend if you start seeing a lot of orange in here that you just uh, press the render button right here or just press the enter key on your keyboard and it will render those. It will give you a nice hard render instead of a soft render and that will keep the program performing efficiently. But we always, the movie picks always recommend that as much as possible, you match your project settings to the media you're using in your video. In other words, we want to use project settings that are as close as possible to the settings or the specs of your video in order to get the most efficient workflow and in order to get the highest quality output. What does that mean exactly? Well, most of the video on my timeline here was shot on an AVCHD camcorder. That's what I want to base my specs on. Okay, so I've got other video mixed in here, but I mostly want to match the specs of video from that camcorder. Right here is an example of video from that camcorder. I'm going to just quickly look at what the specs of that video are. Just right click and then select show properties. It's actually off the page here, but trust me, it's there. And when I select show properties, you can see I'm working with a 1920 by 1080 clip with a frame rate of 29.97. And if I go here to the edit menu and select project settings on the general page, I can see that that's kind of what I got here is 1920 by 1080 with a 30 FPS drop frame. That means 29.97. So my video matches the project settings. That may not always be the case. The program will automatically set up your project settings to match your video based on the very first clip you add to your timeline. I hope I'm not making this overly complicated. So one thing I always make a point of doing, I'm going to zoom in, maybe you can see it. There it is, is I hide at the beginning of the timeline a clip that I think most of my project is going to be made up of or clip type. So this is video that was shot with my camcorder. And if you look, you can't even see it. It's way over there. It's less than a second long. But when I zoom in on it, here it is. Uh, this is going to tell the program, I want you to set up the project to match the settings for this clip. Anything else I put in there we can work with, but most of my video is going to be of this format. And then the program will automatically set your project settings to match this clip no matter what you put after it. Now there are ways to force the program to use project settings and I show you that in other tutorials but for the most part this little trick here and you notice I even took its uh, opacity and dragged it down to zero so it'll be totally invisible. There's no sound, no audio on this clip but having that clip as the very first clip on my timeline told the program this is what I want my project settings to be. Then as I build up my timeline, anytime uh, one of those clips shows up, I'll get what is essentially a smart render. It's not a true smart render, but the program will be working most efficiently and will give me the closest to original quality in my output. Just a great little tip, and if you don't fully understand it, come on by the community forum and we can talk about it. Um, if you want to know more tips and tricks like this, be sure and check out the many tips and tutorials we have at moviepix.com. You want to know everything about Premiere Elements and how to do the cool things that we do with it, be sure to check out the moviepix.com guide to Adobe Premiere Elements. It's available on amazon.com. I wrote the book. I'm Steve Grisetti, and I hope to see you again real soon.